All right, so uh, confusion matrix, it should be really quick too. Um, basically, we're using the same thing with type one, type two errors, basically false negatives and false positives. It's a way to visualize our different errors going through. So again, our back to our little um, diagram here to figure out what's a uh, false negative, false positive, right? And then essentially what we can do, we can use this to visualize what, um, what our, where our false positives are and where our false negatives are, or where our true positives are even. So note that the diagonal, I'm kind of giving you a heads up before I show you the picture itself. But on the diagonal itself, it's gonna be this nice little matrix, right? This two dimensional matrix. Diagonals are gonna represent basically it's true positives when you got it correct. So it's like, oh, we marked this as positive and it was actually positive. Um, the Y axis usually is the true label. Okay, so note that basically this is gonna represent what the actual label is. And then basically if you read across, we can say what the false negatives are. So the ones that are not along the diagonal. And then um, reading vertically, we can actually see the false positives um, and basically the things that are off diagonal. So to show you some example, rather than just talk about it, here's a really simple one. Essentially there's two classes. You can see here, here's the true label, zero and one, right? So this is the true label is zero. So you can get negative, right? So on this part's negative, on the diagonal are basically the true, um, I shouldn't even say true positives, it really should be true. I guess it's in a way true positive, but basically these are the true parts. So this is a true negative. So we predicted it to be zero and it was labeled as zero. So we got two of them that were predicted to be like zero and they were actually zero. Right here we have four of them that were predicted to be um, one and we um, labeled it as one. So cool, right? So that means we get basically these guys right here are like correctly identified, okay? Um, and then on the off hand right here, we can see our predicted label is saying, we said it's going to be zero, but it was actually one. So this would be like a false negative. We thought it was negative zero, not one. Um, same similar, sim similar thing right here. We labeled it to be one, meaning positive, but in fact, it was zero negative. So these would be uh, false positives. So we marked as positive, even though it was in fact negative. Um, you can basically have this for multiple classes, which the false positive, true negative makes it a little bit harder to like understand like what do we mean by false negative? Essentially, these tend to be just like where you, um, what's it called? Where you didn't get it quite right. But it's actually really cool because when you have multiple classes, we can actually see where things are more identified as correct or not. And I'll show you an example of that down here in a second. Um, but here's multiple classes. So you can see here's labels of zero, one, two, three. In this case, I wouldn't use like false positive, false negative, because it's kind of confusing. Um, I basically would look at here is that these on the diagonal are marked correct. So you can see the true label and then the predicted label. So you can see that we got these correct. In this case here, we can actually look at um, the true label. We misidentified one of the zeros as a two. Um, if I have one, huh, I was hoping that maybe there was one, but you could have all zeros, for example on one whole thing and say, oh, we got basically all of them correct. Um, but you can see here is that this can be helpful to say where you misidentified, not just that you misidentified, but what you misidentified. So um, showing you a quick example of this is um, this diagram here, which I have from this repo. So this here, let's see if I can kind of show you a little bit, this might be easier to go through. So this is a, a little research that I had done before, cool. All right, and so um, basically I was using a visual, um, um, a machine learning model, convolutional neural network to identify different hand signs. So if you know American Sign Language, you can finger spell, basically you can spell out essentially in, um, in English um, the different letters. So if you're familiar, this is like the letter A, this is the letter B, the letter C, and you can finger spell different letters. Um, this data set's not the best, for example. Uh, one is that, uh, some of the, these were not native signers, so they didn't do the exact thing, but you can get an idea of like, you know, what this is looking like. So my machine learning algorithm basically was saying, oh, is this an A, a B, a C, or a D, you know, like based on what their hands are doing. So for example, this is actually an N. I'll try to zoom this in a little bit. So you can see here's the actual letter N, which just looks like this, a little blurry. You can see over here is the letter M. So you can imagine that the machine learning algorithm might get these two confused because they look relatively close versus something like an F and an N they look very different from each other, so I wouldn't expect the machine learning algorithm to actually mess up as often. So at the end of this, after, you know, I'm just scrolling through this paper really quickly, is at the end of this, I actually was able to build a, machine, um, a confusion matrix. So you can see here, and I have different actually models going forward. So 
in this case, you can see here our handshake targets. So these are actually the true labels. No, mine's actually flipped over the other way. Um, and these are my uh, predictions. So you can see here is that on this diagonal here, and also note that it's um, color coded, where essentially uh, brighter spots mean that it was um, those higher values. So 82% of all A's were actually, um, where, I'm sorry, not 82%. Yeah, 82% of all A's were labeled as an actual A. So you can see that these are actually really good. It's like, okay, it's doing really well, 81, 91. And you can see on the lower end, like there's some ends that are like something like 34 and 34. You said did really poorly on this. In this case, this is actually the letter S and T, which is fun. This is the letter S, it's the letter T. So you kind of sit back, oh, okay, messes up. And you can see here these little islands going on, which is kind of interesting. So this is the kind of fun stuff I like to say is that like, you can see like where it messed up the most. So you'll see here that for the most part, they kind of stay by themselves, but like this, for example, is a G and H. And so note that basically um, the true label of this is G right here, this vertical line, that's the actual label. 63% had got G correct, but 34% had got it wrong. Well, this is a G and this is an H. And so some of the time it actually got this incorrect. So it might be kind of blurry or it was kind of hard for it to identify this difference here. You can see something similar, and this is just by coincidence that M and N, for example, look similar, but they're close by. You can see it also messed up. This is M and this is N, and you can see it messed up. Well, this is letter M, this is letter N. So you'd expect that to kind of come out. But you can start seeing some interesting ones too, like for example, I'm trying to pull one that's kind of 25%. So 25% here, this is the true target is actually the letter T. Okay, so this is the letter T, but you can see 25% of the time, it guessed it as the letter A. So you can see, oh, okay, that actually looks really similar. That makes sense that it goes through. And you can start basically debugging, well, not debugging, but basically identifying where your machine learning algorithm fails. What's really cool about this too is I did actually multiple models. So you can see here, this, for example, uses uh, BGD16 transfer learning. So basically it uses one type of model structure and then kind of picture that in your mind real quick as I kind of move on to the next um, uh, algorithm. And you can see here, there's a little bit difference in here. In this case, this is a ResNet 50. And you can see they're still having trouble with um, the letter T here. So you can see that it's still misidentifying as A. But there's also some a uh, little bit uh, better, for example, it identifies the letter P in Q, which is this letter P is the letter Q. So you can see there's a little bit of similarity between those two, which maybe I had a difficult time. But you might be able to identify between the two and say, okay, how well is it doing on certain ones? Maybe it's always going to have difficulty between A and T because they look so close together. But maybe um, there's other ones, like for example, going back to this first model, you can see there's a lot more little islands of just like random, just not getting it correctly versus this model here. I might say this is a better model because I, you know, this is more general, like me just looking like, oh, there's a lot more isolated model um, islands. You can see a lot of them, even though you might get it wrong every once in a while they're mostly identified to spots. And I might say, okay, this is the letter T, which it was, this is letter T. This was predicted as, oh, sorry, I'm putting it the wrong way. This is the letter T. And you can see this is uh, identified as T correctly. This is letter, uh, is that Q? I can't see that below. Yeah, Q. So PQ, so this is Q right here. And that's a weird one. You're like, hmm, that's an interesting why this part might be misidentified as T. So that might be something to explore further because 15% of those are actually misidentified. And so this is how you can kind of debug and kind of see how well your classification where you might need to make improvements. So it's a great evaluation tool um, that I think sometimes people kind of forget to like use and stuff like this, but you can very quickly identify parts. And again, it's a nice visual element too. Um, I, th I, liked, I like putting in the numbers in here, um, but you can see even if I took out the numbers, you could probably very quickly identify which parts are not doing very well or which parts are doing better. So yeah, anyway, that is uh, confusion matrices. Cool. All right. Any questions on um, that aspect? No? Okay, cool. Any questions overall on anything we talked about uh, this past hour? All right, cool. We'll go ahead and stop it here then.